Welcome back to another episode of the Worry Wart Gamer Creation. New IP. That's why I buy consoles. That's why I identify with Nintendo. That's why I identify with PlayStation. That's why any of us identify with any platform. You've got to create new things every generation that can carry forward to the next. Build a brand, build a character, build worlds for gamers to take that journey with you, not only from one game to the next, but from one platform to the next. And Sony has done it again, partnering with Team Ninja to create Rise of the Ronin. A lot of people are looking at this and saying it has Ghosts of Tsushima vibes, but imagine Team Ninja, Ninja Gaidan gameplay in an Assassin's Creed type open world, a Ghost of Tsushima structured open world with actual things to do that don't burden you with so much that you lose the focus on the narrative. This looks to take the best of the open world Ghost of Tsushima and marry it with Ninja Gaidan type stealth and gameplay, the ultimate Shinobi experience. It is just a testament to why everyone tunes into these shows whether or not they're Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, we want to see new IPs, we want to see new exclusives, we want to see new worlds created every generation, and Sony has done it again. This was the highlight of the show for me. Now, there's a lot in this show to talk about, but for me, it's always about the new. It's always about the creativity. I want to see things move forward. I want to see these companies take chances and risks and create things without worrying about, are they going to sell? Are they not going to sell? Should we scale things down? Should we make everything mobile-esque? Should we put everything into a service? You know what? Let's create something large. Let's do something amazing and let's put it out there. This is what was so exciting to me. Not to the fact that it's just exclusive and they're going to take advantage of the PlayStation 5, because that's why I bought it. I want them to create things that take advantage of the box, but I also want them to stay true to the DNA of PlayStation, and that's creating new things. And this is just, I mean, it's amazing. I am almost speechless. When I saw this, I thought, I cannot wait to play this game. It's another character. It's another world. It's another new IP that I can grab onto, get excited about, explore and i just cannot wait to get my hands on this in 2023 playstation 5 exclusive and you know with everyone talking about how games are just too expensive to make anymore you can't make these kind of games anymore it's nice to see sony saying nope we're gonna go with what our strengths are next up was a game that i was already excited for when i saw it it was a cross between bayonetta and some you know devil may cry type of action hack and slash adventure and it was originally titled Project Eve, and now it is Stellar Blade. It looks absolutely incredible. Again, leveraging the system, giving me, I'm a consumer. I don't care about what anybody else wants or thinks should happen in the industry. I want to buy a system, and I want the company that makes the system to give me things that leverage the strength of that system. Exclusives, third-party deals, I don't care, but this looked Phenomenal. Again, we go from a brand new world created for the PlayStation 5 to another brand new world and character created for the PlayStation 5. Cannot wait to get my hands on this. Like I said, it looks like a cross between Bayonetta with the hyper focus in on action, but there is also that sort of Devil May Cry esque feel to it when it comes to traversal and exploration. And I just cannot wait to play this game. Something else I really appreciate, I gotta be honest, a strong female protagonist that isn't afraid to also be sexy. Something that most developers shy away from, something that most people critique for some strange reason, but I love the fact that they stuck to their guns with this game, with the character design, with the world, with the art style, absolutely, positively love it. Cannot wait to play this game, Stellar Blade, another PlayStation 5, brand new IP, brand new exclusive for PlayStation 5 users. You can't argue it. You can't argue the value and the excitement that this show brought with just these two titles. So when it comes to creativity, when it comes to new things for users, I don't know how already this generation you can't own a PlayStation 5. If you're a gamer, if you're a console gamer, you simply have to have a PlayStation 5, especially going into 2023 with just these two brand new IPs announced. This is before Spider-Man 2. This is before Wolverine. This is before what Sucker Punch is working on. This is before the rest of the Sony first party studios decide to show you their PS5 
only games. It's just going to get so much more incredible from here. Super excited. And of course, of course, the end of this show absolutely got me to stand up. I was staring at that television. I was super excited. It was like the 80s all over again. Of course, I'm talking about God of War Ragnarok. Now, there were some rumors that it would be here, it wouldn't be here. There would be an October event all to itself, and I think that may still happen when it comes to gameplay and different things that you can do in the world. What's new, for instance? I think that they're gonna highlight that at some point in time in October, but this trailer, again, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, okay, I just sold two brand new IPs created for the PlayStation 5. Now I'm seeing the continuation of another brand new reimagining of an IP that happened last generation. This is why it's important to create, because those other two games, they're going to carry forward to the PlayStation 6 and all of the other Sony first-party studios like Spider-Man and Wolverine and everything else, Sucker Punch, that I mentioned before. Here is an example of it. And guys, this is cross-gen. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what they're going to do? This looks absolutely incredible. The visceral feel that you get just from watching the combat. Can you imagine playing this game and feeling that impact with the DualSense controller and continuing the story and learning about all these new characters and exploring these new environments? Look at this. When they call Kratos pretender, pretending to be a god, when he says, death can have me when it's earned me, man, I am so pumped for this game. Take a look at it. It just makes me want to jump up and down. This is what console gaming is all about. Absolutely pumped to get this game. This year, this holiday is PlayStation 5's holiday. Absolutely hands down. The only thing that I worry about is that Kratos is killed off, and I don't see Atreus as being a character that I'm really interested in as a main protagonist for a series. Now, maybe they prove that wrong. I just don't feel that Kratos should be replaced. I understand he's getting old. I understand it has more of an emotional impact if he makes that ultimate sacrifice. I just don't feel that Atreus is a strong character, and maybe in the second game he becomes a strong character. I don't know. I just don't get that feeling of mainline, you know, character in a franchise from Atreus. I could be wrong. I just don't feel that. So I'm worried about that aspect of the game. But other than that, this is why we move from generation to generation. This is why we buy one platform over another. This is why we stay with one platform over another. These examples that I've given here cannot be denied. They will not be denied, man. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video.